Uh, my name is Kentaro Takeda, um, a developer of Tomoe Linux, and he is a Tetsuo Honda. I'm from Japan, and NTT, uh, I'm in NTT Data Corporation. Okay, let's get started. First of all, here is uh, about of this presentation. This, pre <coughs> this presentation consists of two parts. Part one, uh, uh, this part, uh, I present you some brief introduction and demonstration of Tomoyo Linux. And I show you, uh, in addition, uh, the current status of this project. And part two, uh, Tetsuo is the main architect of Tomoyo Linux. So he'll show you some deep, deep insight of Tomoyo Linux for security guys. Okay, go ahead. Firstly, uh, I'll answer the question, uh, what Tomo Linux is? So, uh, in short words, of course, a path name based mandatory access control modules for Linux kernel. And Tomo Linux originally developed by the NTT Data Corporation Research and Headquarter <coughs> section. And uh, since two years ago, uh, uh, Tomo Linux is released version 1.0, and about uh, two years ago, uh, Tomo Linux is available under GPL. Of course, uh, the concept of Tomo Linux is path name based security. That's all we talk about uh, path names role in uh, part two. So I, in, I introduce some aspects of Tomoyo. Here are some main features of Tomoyo. <coughs> Tomoyo is a tool for designing and enforcing state transition. And in other, in, in other words, Tomoyo can monitor and judge program execution requests, and Tomoyo performs state transition by execution. The other aspect, uh, observing and restricting requests within each state. So in other words, Tomoyo monitors and judges read or write requests to files. Here is an example of state transition by execution. The root state indicates SV init, and SV init executes SV mingit, so this blue circle shows SV, SV mingit executed by SV init. And SV mingit executes being login, so this Blue circles indicate bin login executed by Mingeti, executed by SV init. And so on, uh, RCC init is executed by SV init. And each state transition occurs by ex uh, programmed execution. This is a state transition by execution in Tomoyo term. And this is not core feature, but very attractive feature of Tomoyo. Uh, it is called automat automatic, automatic policy learning. This feature, uh, by this feature, Tomoyo can accumulate access permissions within each domain. The uh, domain is, uh, in other words, a uh, state. And of course, uh, running is executed by, with path name. Uh, automatic automatic policy learning feature, it is not essential part as a security module, but uh, very attractive and friendly for averagely experienced administrators. So I'll show you some examples. First example is Postfix. This is a state transition. 
of a post fix. So a state, in other words, domain transition occurs automatically uh, every, uh, in every execution. So uh, this blue box shows the domains of postfix. You know, uh, domain uh, postfix is consists of various uh, small sub-programs, such as uh, postfix script, or user postfix master, cleanup, local pickup, queue manager, trivial rewrite, and so on. And this blue, uh, in this blue box, each line indicates a domain. So postfix, uh, postfix of uh, domains of postfix are these various domains, and this is a sample of the domain. And next step, access control lists, in other words, uh, permissions. This policy is for user SB HTTPD. And the kernel is the basis of the process invocation history. So, user has been HTTPD may read HTML asterisk. And HTTPD can read etos HTTPD asterisk dot com. And HTTPD can read user read HTTPD modules asterisk dot so. And HTTPD can Write var of httpd asterisk underscore log. And such PID file can be created and unlinked by httpd. So you can uh, easily read this policy and you can understand what mean, what this policy mean. And the next step, here is a domain transition and ACLs. This red box consists two parts of policy. First part is a policy for bin bash, and second part uh, is a policy for bin LS. And LS is executed by bash. So uh, user bin SSHD uh, executed by a uh, bin bash executed by user bin sbin sshd can execute bin ls and can read home takedaken dot bash rc or read and write home takedaken dot bash history and so on. And this ls is executed by bash and this bash is executed by sshd so <coughs> this ls can uh, read etose group ns switch and password. So state transition, uh, in other words, domain transition, is short such diagrams. SSH, SSHD execute bin bash and bin bash the domain is here. And bin as the domain is bin as the domain is here. <coughs> uh, this policy is all uh, contains all element of Tomorinux policy, so you can easily understand. Okay, I'll show some demonstration. Environment is uh, very simple. Uh, Linux 2.6.28 and patch MMOTM, <laughs> this version, and I use Tomoyo LSM version revision 2031. Okay, so dark. So this is a uh, VMware and running Debian with powered by Tomorinux. I log in as a root user and ex execute Tomorinux uh, edit policy command. Here is a Tomorinux policy. 
And uh, by uh, using edit policy command, you can browse or edit Tomoinax policy. And please look at this line. Oh, oh. The first line, it says domain transition editor. So this view shows the tom domain transition of Tomo Linux. And as you can see, various programs executed. And it looks like PS3. So I find Postfix. I found it. Here is a postfix policy. User sling postfix can execute postfix script, and postfix script can execute postfix script or postfix master. And <coughs> if I press the enter key here, here is a domain of postfix master. Postfix master can Read, read and write dev node and read such files and make so and so on. So you can browse, uh, you can understand what is happening in your Linux box by browsing policy. And here is SSHD, uh, Z0 executed by SSHD, and uh, this line shows this CCS edit policy command. So uh, press enter. CCS edit policy command. Read such files. This kernel security is uh, mounted uh, as a security FS. OK. Uh, I turned on another window. And I I execute some commands in this shell LS PS. And I reload the policy. Please pay attention these areas. Reload. LS and PS is automatically appended. So now, uh, because uh, this Z shell is running in a running mode, so LS, uh, execution of LS and PS are autom automatically uh, appended to policy. So I turned this Z shell as enf in enforcing mode. Now, this that you can execute LS and PS, but who command is not permitted because it is not run in running mode. So of course, as a root user, remove is not permit. Uh, remove is not permitted also. So I, I showed basic demonstration, but it contains all of Tomorinux running and domain transition and t turning on, turn on enforcing mode. OK, next step. Uh, Tomorinux has a two, uh, there, is, there are two versions of Tomorinux currently. Uh, uh, version 1.6 uh, is a non-LSM LSM version. Uh, it is a start point and full-featured uh, file networks or original capability and so on. And uh, I used LSM version as a, as a past demonstration. LSM version has uh, only five restriction feature for now. 
and ASM version we are proposing to mainline now. And the current status of this project. ASM hooks was not designed to implement pass name based security modules because VFS mount wasn't available inside the LSM module. Now a uh, new LSM hook are uh, placed where VFS mount is available in Linux 3. The patch name is uh, introduced new LSM hooks where VFS mount is available. And now, uh, next, as a next steps, we are pro proposing a Tomorrow's body now. This is at, uh, this uh, current status of Tomorrow Linux. Okay, this is a, f a final, uh, final slide of part one. Let's dive it, uh, let's deeper into Tomorrow Linux. Uh, my name is Tetsuo Honda. Thank you for coming today. There are two, there are two versions of Tomoya. The version 1.6 does not use LSM, but fully featured. This, this material refers to this version. And Tomoya 1.6 supports many kernels and many distributions, including 2.4 kernels. And version 2.2 is modified to use LSM for mainline inclusion. Proposal is in progress. And now, today I don't have many, I don't have so much time. So this is the digest version of past. This this material is made from past. Uh, materials, digest version. The name-based access control has been unpopular among security professionals because whether a file is readable and or writable and or executable depends on the location of the file. But we have better not to neglect the role of name in security or we will get undesirable conse consequence. This is Tomoya's argument. As long as a uh, file's contents are stored in an inode, the contents could be separated or protected by label-based access control. But when the contents are copied to user space and mixed by applications, the label of the contents is lost. We cannot preserve labels in user land. So, we should be aware with factors that control how the contents are processed. In regarding how the contents are pro processed, the name, is, name plays some role. There, there, are, there are many factors that affect security. For example, programs code, files accessed by programs, including config configuration files, and user input, pass name, and command line arguments and environment variables, and probably more. And Tomoya tries to care name factors or string data. Uh, I'll, exp I'll, ex I'll show you some, some scenarios where string data matters. Scenario one, customers demand. We want to upload web contents via CGI, FTP, SFTP, Turbo, etc. The customer is expecting a file name like bar www.html plain text and expecting contents like how world. And the customer What's the red Apache sub the web contents? This is a scenario. Now, how can we avoid bell case? If the file name created was bar www.html.htaccess 
and the contents of that file was redirect match dot asterisk http example dot com cdi bin version eight slash dot one. If such file name and such contents was written, then a patch will interpret dot hd access and return some three two uh, three or two moved temporarily to clients. And what what this means is the client will be redirected to major server, which is not good. So people are aware with cross-site scripting vulnerability. It's it's well known and it's an application level pro problem. Uh, but are people also aware with redirection vulnerability like this three or two? response. This is an OS import problem as the file is uploaded by user and applications such as FTP, SFTP, TAR, or so, and so on. So don't we have some room for protection? I think there is some room. Now, Tomoyo's solution. You can use backslash minus operator to avoid exercising unwanted path names. Only access controls which care name factor can do. So name-based access control like Apama and Tomoyo Linux can do, like this. Below is an example that doesn't allow creation of file name which begins with dot. So that file like dot hd access won't be created. Allow create bar www.html backslash ast backslash minus dot backslash ast. This, this rule provides creation of files that start with dot. Now, next scenario. We need to execute bin cat, bin map, bin remove, and some more commands from Apache CGI. Now, the question is, what happens if the CGI has a security hole that allows below operation? .ht password is renamed to index.html. The result is a patch will interpret index.html and return the contents of .ht password, which, which is password information to client. This is not good. So, Tomoyo controls what file names are created, deleted, opened by the CGI. The name-based access control can provide use of inappropriate names. This is advantage of name-based access control. And Tomoyo changes security context of a process whenever a program is executed. So, bin cat, bin map, bin remap, and some more commands will have different set of path names that are allowed to, allowed to exercise. Se separate as much as possible. It's Tomoyo's way. Next scenario. We want to prevent administrator from blocking general users. What happens if the administrator issues the following operation? Hard ranking, etc. Result conf to etc. No login. Etc. Result conf is not a secret file, but should not be hard linked as etc. No login. Otherwise, the administrator can prevent the general users from logging in if the administrator is allowed to create a file named etc. No login. So, whether readable, writable, executor is one of problem. But how the, that file is used is another problem. So Tomoyo's solution, Tomoyo restricts whether names, with, uh, with what names the administrator and the general users can create, delete, rename, link, etc. So you can restrict namespace, also restrict namespace changes like mount, amount, change root, pivot root. Next scenario, 
We want to debate administrators' trust. We want to provide a position that will leak its shadow. For example, cap its shadow. Yes, we know there are a plenty room for criticizing name-based access control. But what I want, want to, that is not what I wanted to say here. The, the, the customer's demand is for bank operations that will leak its shadow. So, uh, and we need to grant read access to its shadow to applications which authenticate a user, like being login, being through, user being SSHD. Then, why not consider how its shadow is used by such applications? I'm talking about behaviors after the contents of SJ Shadow are copied to user space memory. This is not a battle of name versus label. Uh, do you know SSHD supports banner functionality? Here, here is a way to leak SJ Shadow. User has been SSHD hyphen O port banner at the shadow. <laughs> Insane command, but this result in chat at the shadow. This is not what the customer did not want. Insane input, insane result, but this is what customer didn't want. So Thomas solution is Tomoyo can control command line parameters and environment variables because they, they, they are factors that control how the contents are processed. Here are some examples. Allow execute user SPSSHD if execute.rc equals, huh? equals 1. This means when no argument, argument is given. Next example, R execute pin C if exec argv equals 3, exec argv1 equals hyphen C, exec argv2 equals bin mail, exec mp pass e equals bin user bin. R execution of bin C only for executing bin mail. Now, uh, now uh, next scenario, we, w we have to allow execution of bin share from our server application. Parameters given to bin share are variable, but we don't want to allow use of arbitrary, arbitrary parameters. So this means we want to control not only commands, that, but also command line parameters and environment variables. Now, Thomas' solution is you can validate record data try parameters and do setup procedures like mounting private temp version, like uh, what recent Fedora does <laughs> using execute handler keyword. This is a uh, this is in principle same as man in, man in the middle attack. Man in the middle for security purpose. Pure example was user being check CGI palm intercept program execution requests. Like this one. This program is intercept execute request and check parameters and detoxify if necessary and do something set up if necessary and start the requested programs. Next scenario, we want to assign different permissions based on client IP address and or port number. For example, client from network segment A can do this, this work and client from network segment B can do another set of operations. Tomoyo's solution, here, this is Tomoyo's solution. Tomoyo can change task's internal state when a network connection is established. For example, clients from network one, when connected from network one, 
then setting task state zero to one. If client connected from network two, then set task state to two. And you, we can use this task state in the in the part of conditions for permissions. There are many features in Tomoyo. <laughs> Next scenario, we want to accept privacy violation caused by software updates so that the service can restart properly after software updates. Software update is uh, trouble prone because some irregular request happens. And Tomoyo's solution, Tomoyo can interactively handle privacy violation in enforcing mode. U usually, when policy violation occurs, that request is immediately rejected. But we, you can use this interactive, interactive enforcing mode to handle policy violation when, uh, so, when, uh, when or just after software, software updates. To handle pass name changes, to handle irregular signal requests, to examine whether the restarted service can work properly. Now, last scenario, we want to protect our system from SSH brute force attacks, but we, we can't use proper key authentication because we are not allowed to use removable media. So public key authentication is a good way to prevent, protect the system from brute force attack, but some, some people cannot carry removable media. In that case, password authentication is needed. And here, there are Tomoe's, Tomoe's solutions. You can insert free customizable extra authentication layer between the SSH server and, and the login shell. Do, do you remember uh, process implication 3, SP init, uh, RCC init, and FAT command 3? Tomo is a tool to design domain transition tree and enforce what requests are allowed in each state. So we, we, we can insert free customized extra authentication layer if we want to do. And in that layer, we can do extra authentication, not limited to password authentication, but also in using timing or email or whatever, whatever elements available in SSH session. So very strong authentication is possible. Now I don't have so much time, so I'm, I'm going to finish. What versions can Tomoyo 1.6 support? Tomoyo 1.6 supports Banya Kana since 2.4.30 and 2.6.11, and many distribution related scanners, including Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, Debian, Suze, Ubuntu, Azure Linux, Bind Linux, Nature Linux, Gen2, Hadoop Gen2, and Mandriba, Tabo Linux, and Tabo Linux Server and Client. Why tomorrow? 1.6 does not use LSM. There are several reasons. One is not all hooks are provided, but uh, minimum hooks for implementing Tomoe 2.2.0 were matched in 2.6.28-G4. But Tomoe needs more LSM hooks. Hooks for socket access and receive message operations. Hooks for non project capability. Hooks for interactive enforcing mode. Tomoe does not handle project capabilities because CAPSYS admin is used for many purposes. So Tomoe introduced different type of capability. And another reason is to support 2.4 kernels and more large reason is Tomoyo wants to coexist with other security mechanisms. We now understand our unexpected names because it's unexpected behaviors, don't we? So 
SA, SA Linux is fine. Controlling only, but controlling only label is not sufficient. We need to also care about name factors. However, current LSM is exclusive, so we cannot enable SA Linux and Tomorrow at the same time. I hope LSM will become stackable so that we can enable multiple LSM modules at the same time. Now the con con conclusion. The name-based Mac is an inferior solution com compared to the label-based Mac if we care only whether a file is readable and or writable and or executable. But there are name-specific advantages if we care other aspects in security. Tomorrow is a name-based Mac which compensates, compensates for rubber-based Mac shortage. All, all, all materials, materials related to Tomorrow Linux is available at sourceforge.jp Tomorrow Project. Thank you. So, any other questions here? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And clearly. Okay. Now, you, you gave an example of uh, using the X control for, for the number of uh, command line parameters to SSHD uh, as an example of uh, the features of Tomoyo. It's an interesting feature, but I, I feel obliged to note that there is another way of solving the same problem. SSHD will, in all modern distributions, work uh, quite uh, fine without, being, uh, without having access to the shadow file. If uh, shadow file access is denied, the PAM, Linux, the, the PAM Unix module will uh, call the Unix underscore chkpwd helper program to read the, the, the uh, file. So therefore only the one program, a small program needs to be granted the access. And this uh, method of using a, a helper program to read the uh, privileged data and then return a boolean can be used by the program as well. So in many cases, you can use this to, to minimize privileges of the main program. That's a comment I want to make. But, but, but the feature in question will be used for other things. I acknowledge that. So, yeah. Uh, can you have two different programs transition into the same domain, or would you need to create a separate domain for when one program starts RM and a different program starts the same thing? Is it possible to transition to the same domain, or do you need to create if if the if the program program previous pro program was different, then the destination destination domain is different. Different parent, different domain. So in this example, uh, SSHD executes this Z shell, and if I execute Z shell uh, another another Z shell. That shell is appended, and LS is, if I execute in that shell, this that shell, uh, 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 being LS is appended as uh, this that shell's child. Sorry, I can't understand your question. That's okay. Um, can I ask another question? Yes. Um, if, you, if a program is updated, so you oh. get a new version of it, did you say that you run the learning mode again? Uh, uh, you mean uh, if the program is updated, such as the RPM package? Uh, if I have a version of ZSH. Okay. Uh, it depends on the path name of that shell. Same path name, but now it does different things. Uh, it doesn't matter. By, by the part, uh, it's will really transit to different domain, but for, for demo programs, it, it will be convenient to run in the same domain. So this, 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 is, this line, SSHD, is configured to run in this domain, regardless of the invocation program.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.